Hi, I'm Jasmine from California. Please like and subscribe. I was raised in an orphanage until I was eight years old, and I never spoke a word. Hi there, sweetie. What's your name? Say something to the nice people, Jasmine. They want to get to know you. It wasn't that I couldn't speak. I was just shy. I didn't have many friends, at least not the type that stood on two feet. One day when I was eight, I saw my best friend Furry stuck in a tree. I ran over to the firehouse across the road and banged on the door. What's wrong? I dragged the fireman to the tree and he immediately rescued my cat. He was amazing! The next day, I decided to thank him by making him a special meal. Mm. Thank you. You like spaghetti? After that, the fireman came to visit me every week, and I felt so comfortable that I started to speak. In fact, I couldn't stop talking and I hated it when we had to say goodbye. One day, the fireman came to visit with the biggest smile. Jasmine, how would you feel if I was your dad? And the next morning, I moved in with him. I had my own room, my own fireman's hat, and as much spaghetti as I wanted. We did everything together, and life was good. But in the seventh grade, dad brought home some guests one day, a beautiful woman and her daughter who was my age. This is Leslie and her daughter mm -hmm. Tiffany. Leslie and I are getting married. I was happy at the news. It's a pleasure to meet you. Of course it is. I'm lovely. <sighs> but it's not a pleasure to meet you. It's worse than that day I ate a whole jar of chilies and pooped fire out of my butt, and also I had to get a tooth extraction and my appendix removed on the same day. And I hate you already. Soon Leslie and Dad were married, and we moved into a bigger house. It was beautiful on the outside, but the inside <gasps> needed work. It's a disaster. We're not living here. Come on, babe. It just needs a little love. Over the next few months, Dad and I fixed up the house. By the time we were done, it was perfect. But nothing made those two happy. What do you think? Like we're too poor to get a professional interior decorator. We're going to the cat massage place. Yeah, the cats there give the best head massages. It feels so good when they pull on your hair. Really? Because I can do that for free. Tiffany glared at me and the two left. Dad, I don't get it. Leslie is so materialistic and shallow, and Tiffany is even worse. You can do so much better. Honey, no one's perfect. Leslie and Tiffany just like nice things. What's really important is family. Promise me you'll give them a chance. I'll try. So I did. Things were better for a few months, but then I started to notice Leslie and Tiffany acting strange. One night, I caught Leslie and Tiffany whispering to each other in the dark till they spotted me. Go to bed now, or you're grounded for a month. And you won't be allowed to take a shower or wax your mustache for three months. The next day, Leslie said she wanted to cook dinner for a change. And hours later, Dad had food poisoning. He was released from the hospital the next day, but he was still really weak. Instead of taking care of him, Leslie and Tiffany went out on a shopping spree. I think Leslie tried to poison you. Poison me? That's ridiculous. I don't think so. Those two are hiding something, I just know it. Jasmine, Leslie's been trying to connect with you for months, but you're always giving her a hard time. You have to accept them as family and stop making up these crazy stories. A few weeks later, while Dad was out of town, I woke up at night to get some water, but I heard voices coming from the backyard. I looked out the window and saw Leslie and a strange man arguing. Before I could get closer, Tiffany jumped in the way. You should mind your own business. Who is that man? What man? The man you were talking to in the backyard. Oh, Jasmine, you have such an active imagination. I wasn't talking to anyone. Isn't that right, Tiffany? Yes, Mommy. Too active of an imagination compared to her small-shaped head. Why is it so small? Did you crack it open like an egg and the doctors forgot to put some pieces back in? You know, back in the orphanage since you were neglected? I went to my room and tried to call Dad, but my calls went straight to voicemail. In fact, he didn't answer his call for days, and it looked like he was missing. We contacted the police to find out where he could have gone, but he'd vanished without a trace. I felt miserable, but Leslie and Tiffany seemed to go on like it didn't matter one bit. Sometimes, I couldn't help thinking if they had something to do with Dad's disappearance. Two months passed, and one day, Dad's lawyer showed up to talk to me. Your dad told me that in the case of something ever happening to him, I can tell you about his will. What will? Your husband left a million dollars in a trust for Jasmine. Half to be released to Jasmine when she turns 18, and the other half to her legal guardian to take care of her. What about me and my daughter Tiffany? 
Yeah, what did we get? I mean, that man had the longest ear hair, and my eyes hurt seeing that, so yeah, I deserve something. The last time your husband updated his will was when he adopted Jasmine. Here's a check for $500,000 to cover Jasmine's expenses. Leslie and Tiffany went ballistic. They ripped all of my dad's pictures off the wall. Stop! Don't! Tiffany shoved me out of the way as she and Leslie ran around the house destroying everything that reminded them of dad. I grabbed my dad's guitar from his bedroom and hid it under my bed. The next day, Leslie cashed the check. She sold the house and we moved to another city. Leslie made the down payment for a fancy house and car and got new clothes for herself and Tiffany. But the two made me live in the dusty old attic. A few weeks later, Tiffany and I started high school. The moment I stepped on campus, all the kids laughed at me. Leslie had sold all my clothes and gave me only $20 to replace my wardrobe at the secondhand store. Hey, freak. Who are you calling a freak, dummy? <laughs> Where'd you get your clothes, a dumpster? My mom took her off the street. It took my mom three months to get rid of the lice in her head. Our house kept smelling like gas, cause gas is the most effective way to get rid of lice. And it took three months. You get what I mean. <laughs> After a few weeks, I learned to ignore them and focus on my schoolwork. School helped me get my mind off of how much I missed dad. Then one day, a new boy arrived at school. He was gorgeous, and all the girls, including Tiffany, couldn't stop staring at him. He sat next to me in science class, and when the teacher told us to choose a partner for a project, he turned to me. Hey, I'm Kyle. You want to be my partner? You any good at science? I'm going to need more than a pretty face. You're funny. Kyle and I started meeting in the library after school. He was a science nerd just like me. He loved music and was super funny. We turned in our project and got an A. After class, he walked me to my locker. Jasmine, I really like hanging out with you. I was wondering if you wanted to... Before he could finish, Tiffany appeared out of nowhere. Hi, Kyle. How's it going? I was thinking the two of us could go to the movies this weekend. Actually, I was going to ask Jasmine. It's so sweet you've been spending time with Jasmine. Did she tell you about her boyfriend? He's blind and Jasmine is really taking care of him. I mean, two needy people in a relationship? It makes perfect sense. Don't you agree? Boyfriend? What are you... It's pretty serious. They've been hot and heavy for five dark years. You know, because he's blind. That night, Tiffany barged into my room. Don't even think about messing things up with me and MHK. MHK? My hot Kyle. Why are you so stupid? You and Kyle? You're not even his type. You're a liar and... Say one word to him and I'll destroy your dad's stupid guitar. From then on, I strapped the guitar to my back and carried it with me everywhere, even in the bathroom. You're a weirdo. A couple nights later, I watched from the window as Kyle picked Tiffany up for their date. He glanced up at me and I quickly closed the blinds. Kyle still sat next to me in science class. He tried to joke with me, but I ignored him. Hey, Jasmine, you want to study later? That's not a good idea. Why not? Please, just leave me alone. I don't understand. What did I do? I closed my locker and walked away. Kyle didn't sit next to me or try to talk to me anymore. He and Tiffany seemed to be getting really close, so it was better that I stayed away. A few weeks later, I was walking to class when I heard a huge commotion in the hallway. It's our two-month anniversary, and you get me this? What's wrong? Please, calm down. Everybody's staring at us. I told you. I wanted a diamond necklace. I thought you were joking. I can't afford a diamond necklace. Wait, are you suggesting you're poor? Why did you look rich to me? You shallow people pretending to be someone you're not. I'm dumping your poor butt. A few weeks later, Tiffany found a new rich boyfriend named Matthew and she was smitten. She even invited him over for dinner one night, and all he did was brag about all the expensive things he owned. Leslie and Tiffany couldn't get enough. One day, I stayed late after school to study in the library. As I was walking down the hall, I heard someone playing guitar. It was the song my dad used to play when I was a kid. I darted toward the sound. From the window, I saw a man. He was tall with short hair like dad, but I couldn't see his face. You almost scared me to death. Sorry, I thought you were someone else. I didn't know you played guitar. You'd know if you ever talked to me. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have blown you off. I understand. Tiffany never liked the fact that I was friends with you first. So, are you any good or do you just carry that thing around as a fashion statement? 
I pulled the guitar off my back and started to play. Kyle and I played together, and it was magical. A few days later, we entered a local talent show. We won first prize and took home a thousand dollars. Soon, Kyle and I started playing a weekly gig at a popular venue in town. People came from all over to see us. We became popular in school, and we were making good money. I stashed it all away under a loose floorboard in my room. <laughs> One day during lunch, Kyle and I were in the cafeteria when Tiffany came up to us. Hey, rock star. How about we hang out this weekend? No, thanks. Jasmine and I are busy with practice. Oh, my Kyle, you're so ignorant. Jasmine would die to please me. She won't mind. Actually, I do. We have to work on a new song. Also, why would he want to hang out with you? Fine, whatever. Later that night, Tiffany barged into my room. You stole my boyfriend. What boyfriend? Kyle? Why are you acting like you have memory loss? You broke up with Kyle, and we aren't dating. You won't get away with this. You took something from me, and now I will too. Then Tiffany grabbed my father's guitar and smashed it to pieces. Now we're even. I charged towards Tiffany, and we got into the biggest fight ever. What's going on here? She attacked me, Mom. She's crazy. I'm scared, Mommy. Hug me. She broke my guitar. She stole my boyfriend, and now she's trying to kill me. Let's get a restraining order against her, Mommy. Jasmine, you've always been jealous of Tiffany, and now you've gone too far. No more cell phones. No more music. No more anything. I couldn't stay in that house another minute. So I climbed out the window and ran away, and I ended up on Kyle's doorstep. He and his mom were really sympathetic and gave me a room to stay in. But the next morning, when I went home to get my things, the doors were locked and all the furniture was gone. There was no sign of Tiffany and Leslie anywhere. Kyle and I went to talk to the lawyer about my trust fund, but the lawyer's office was boarded up. I asked one of his neighbors where I could find him. He closed his law firm yesterday and moved away. He didn't leave a forwarding address. I was devastated. I had no money and nowhere to go. You can stay with me for as long as you need. I reported Tiffany and Leslie to the police, and a few weeks later they got back to me. This woman who calls herself Leslie, she's a con artist. She's gone from state to state conning single men out of their fortunes. You and your father were her latest victims. And this girl Tiffany is her niece. What about the money she stole? Can I get it back? I'm sorry, but there's nothing we can do. I went back to Kyle's house, but I was too depressed to get out of bed. Then one day, I opened my door and found a new guitar resting outside the door. Then, Kyle and I wrote a song. We posted it online, and it went viral. Five years later, we were world famous. We spent all our time together writing songs, performing on tour, and falling in love. The next summer, we were married and moved to a house on the beach. But a few months later, Tiffany showed up on our doorstep in tears. What are you doing here? Leslie and her boyfriend skipped town after conning someone and left me behind. They even took my savings. Leslie's my aunt who raised me since I was a kid, and I had no choice but to help her steal money from people. I'm so sorry for what I did to you and your father. I wanted to turn Tiffany away, but she had nowhere to go. I remembered my father's kind spirit, so I helped her to get back on her feet. Tiffany worked with the police to track down Leslie and her boyfriend, and they were eventually successful. Leslie landed behind bars for years. Some months later on my birthday, Kyle and Tiffany came home with the biggest smiles. We have a surprise for you. Tiffany and I discovered a lead on your father a while ago. It was a long shot, so we didn't tell you before, but we found something. What did you find? Kyle opened the door. Dad? Yes, honey, it's me. I've missed you so much. Oh God, me too. Where were you all this time? I was on a road trip and I was in an accident. I woke up with no memory, only this. I drew this picture every night, but I never knew who I was drawing or if she was even real. I tried to start a new life, but I knew there was something missing. I had a hole in my heart. But then Kyle and Tiffany found me. They showed me videos of you performing our song, and then all my memories came flooding back. I'm sorry I wasn't there for you all these years. Dad hugged me tight. It was a dream come true.